Hello and welcome to today's live broadcast and rebroadcast if you're catching this later. Today I'm going to be sharing with you why intermittent fasting is not only about losing weight and if we take our focus off of losing weight, how we can actually reap so many benefits from practicing intermittent fasting. So welcome if you're joining us for the first time. I always ask that you please take a second to hit that uh, subscribe button on YouTube and that like button on Facebook and then make sure you hit that bell notification on YouTube so you will know when we go live and you won't miss our live broadcast and if you are on Facebook all you need to do is make sure that you're set up for the default notifications for our page. So my name is Diane and for the past 25 years I have been helping women find nutrition plans and fitness programs to help them look and feel their best and live their most authentic life and here in this community we are doing that through the practice of intermittent fasting and creating a keto like lifestyle for ourselves that really does allow us to live authentically and i'm going to pause here for just a second because i've been getting a lot of questions in the comment section um, and in my dms about what a keto like lifestyle is and what it means to feast well or to eat nutrient dense foods and the reason why we really do focus on the keto like with a heavy emphasis on the like aspect of this lifestyle is because the ketogenic diet is a very common diet that um, people are very aware of but the like part of that is really where you have the opportunity as the individual to create a lifestyle that helps you live authentically without having to live in extremes we know that incorporating more fats into our diet that are naturally occurring managing how much protein we put into our feasting cycle moving more toward the moderate to low side of protein and really being conscious and realistic about the carbohydrates we are consuming will really help us benefit so that is what feasting well feasting on nutrient dense foods and the keto like lifestyle really means but for today's topic we are going to discuss some of the benefits that intermittent fasting can provide for us and why when we focus on those things and we shift our attention and our short-term outlook away from losing weight how we can really benefit and thus ultimately lose the weight that we are hoping to lose so intermittent fasting clearly is or simply i guess would be the better term to use defined as a taking a 24-hour period and within a 24 hour period, we are creating two windows of opportunity. The first window of opportunity is your fasting window. And the second window of opportunity is your feasting window. There are a lot of different protocols out there regarding intermittent fasting, um, depending on who you are listening to, who coined the protocol or what it is you're trying to achieve from fasting will really determine the protocol that you choose to follow protocols like diets and like genres of eating styles i really do like to emphasize not putting yourself too tightly inside of a box where you feel like you have to follow specific guidelines in order to be successful what we really do encourage here especially if you're coming into intermittent fasting as an aging woman or a woman who's suffering from some sort of hormonal imbalances or sugar related issues such as insulin resistance, hypoglycemia, or any form or level of diabetic conditions, that giving yourself an opportunity of about three weeks of clean fasting in the 20 hour window really will help you uh, take advantage of the opportunity of balancing out your hormones. That is probably one of the most beneficial aspects of intermittent fasting that is non weight related. Being able to balance out our hormones will really give us the opportunity to reset the clock that we have ticking away um, inside of our body chemistry and allow it to reset itself so that we can then move on to some things that are going to be more specifically related to some desired results that we want to have. Yes, we want to lose weight, but if we're waking up every day feeling like we don't have any energy or we feel fatigued or we can't go a couple of hours without um, having a hypoglycemic type of episode or we're suffering some of that mental fog or mental loss that I um, 
share with you guys that I went through when I was sick um, and or or some of these autoimmune disorders that a lot of us are suffering from we want to make sure that we tackle those things first and foremost so that we have the opportunity to wake up every day looking and feeling our best so that we have the mental fortitude to live our life most authentically and emotional fortitude to live our life most authentically when we're not living authentically because we're so preoccupied with the horrible things that we're feeling or the horrible ways we're seeing ourselves, it's really hard to be successful in any other way of taking care of ourselves, including what it is that you might be striving for with a weight loss. So intermittent fasting, first and foremost, does give us that opportunity to balance out our hormones. The hormones that we balance out first when we start practicing intermittent fasting and live within those two windows of fasting and feasting is our hunger hormones. Balancing out our hunger hormones really does give us the opportunity to balance out and have better control over our own insulin production. So hunger hormones first, insulin is that second thing that we want to be able to balance out and control. And the way we control insulin is by putting ourselves into that fasting opportunity for a long enough period of time where insulin has to actually do its job, right? Where it has to actually be in control of how it's responding to the activities or the things that are going on in your body. And that really is one of the biggest benefits of intermittent fasting as well. We know now through a lot of the studies that are being done that it's that 12 hour mark that insulin is actually at its lowest levels in our body. And that's with us not doing anything, you know, from that last time that we uh, ate for 12 consecutive hours, we are creating that nice 12 hour fast. It's at its lowest level. So imagine what 13 hours can do for you if you're suffering from insulin related type of um, issues going on in your body. Imagine what 14 hours can do for you. Imagine what 15, 16, 17, or what we like to say here is that sweet spot for us women in that 20 hour fast. Knowing that we just created an eight hour window of bonus time for our insulin to just not have to do anything and lay in that rested state. When we are in this fasting opportunity, that is really when our body is forced to seek out new caloric energies to burn. And this is where we start leaning into that weight loss opportunity of intermittent fasting. But we can only lean into that once we balance out those hormones I just talked about, hunger hormones, which then relate to us being able to control insulin. Now we're at a position where we can take advantage of our body being forced to utilize stored calories. As soon as we enter into a feasting opportunity or when we are in that diet mentality or lifestyle where we're eating continuously throughout the day, we are making it really easy for our body to have readily available energy to utilize or calories to utilize. Because as soon as we start feeling the effects of, of calories being utilized and, and sort of wearing off, we put new calories in and then it's easy for our body to, to utilize that. And then we get the headache or the shakes or the aches and pains of hunger and we eat again. And so we're constantly in this state of not needing to utilize our fat stores for energy. So you're not even getting close to tapping in any of those opportunities to burn fat off as a, as a primary energy source. But when we deplete or we get that insulin to its lowest levels and then we extend out to that sweet spot and we force our body to actually seek out that trapped energy as its new form of energizing your body to keep it going, you have nothing to do but burn off fat. The more efficient we become at this through time and consistency, the, the more your body will be dependent and comfortable with seeking out those trapped calories and burning them as their as its source of energy. We know that when we utilize fat as a primary source of energy, it is literally like melting butter off of your body. That your body is literally eating away at fat stores 
and over time your body will eventually lose weight. It is such a time and consistency and trust factor with our bodies and knowing that as women who are suffering from these sugar related issues, meaning that our insulin is totally out of whack and it doesn't even know how to respond anymore, we have to discipline it and put our insulin in a time out session every single day so that we afford our body the opportunity to have to seek out those stored calories that we have on our body and burn them away as fat. That is when we start to actually lose weight. But in that process of balancing out those hunger hormones and putting your insulin in a timeout session every day and utilizing those trapped calories as your new uh, caloric expenditure to get your body to um, you know, stay afloat throughout it, out the day. We also have so many opportunities for our body to just naturally heal itself. You will clear up the brain fog. You will um, be able to reverse the signs and signals of hypoglycemia, insulin resistance, pre-diabetic states, full-blown diabetic states. Autoimmune disorders will also um, start to reverse some of those signs and signals that you have, that you're feeling in your body because your body will heal itself because you're giving it an opportunity to reset and balance itself out. We also know about the amazing opportunities to produce human growth hormones. So we're controlling um, a certain aspect of our hormones with our hunger hormones and what we're doing with insulin. And then we have this amazing opportunity to just explode our human growth hormone. So we're controlling all the hormones that are causing us problems and we're keeping them at bay and allowing them the op their opportunity to behave themselves and do what they're supposed to do. And then we have this other amazing opportunity to have a hormones and our human growth hormones that are actually declining as we age and we can actually pull them back up to the surface and have them be produced in just exponential amounts in our body while we're fasting. If you concentrate on all of those magical things that your body just knows how to do on its own when you move out of the way, then trust me, your body will eventually lose the weight. But as a society, we almost don't care about the healing processes. We almost don't care about balancing out our hormones. We almost don't care about what can happen to our body as far as reversing the things that we're so unhappy with. All we want to do is lose weight. And oftentimes I feel like we miss out on the joy of just understanding how amazing of a machine our body has been designed to be for us because we've never really taken the time to just slow down enough to understand how it works and more importantly, how it works at its best. So intermittent fasting has so many benefits to us outside of losing weight. And when you get everything else fixed and everything else regulating and everything else reset, trust me, the weight will fall off. And in the process of all of that, while you're waiting to lose that weight, you will be able to have an opportunity to have this amazing intimate relationship with your body where you can truly understand how powerful and amazing it is. And you can find the joy in living in your own skin and you can enjoy the the process of what you have been able to do and the power that you have as a human being to just manipulate your body into performing at the level in which you wish it to perform at if you just relax and step out of the way a little bit and let your body do its thing. So intermittent fasting is not only about losing weight, the weight will eventually come off. But there's so many other steps along the way to moving to losing weight that if you just take the time to get to know your body and how your body is designed to operate, trust me, it is it is absolutely fascinating and it is so much fun and will take um, it will take um, sort of a light-hearted approach uh, for you and how it is you're going to move forward through your life, knowing that you won't ever have to worry about losing weight again as long as you practice just two out two windows in your day really efficiently and that's practicing a really efficient intermittent fasting window where you can put your hormones at bay the ones that are causing you problems and you can totally explode the ones that are going to work in your benefit and then when you open up that feasting window understanding what food does to your body we 
go through our lives so mindlessly eating, waiting for other people to tell us what to do or buying into commercial uh, products as the quick fixes or being duped by marketing scams and pretty packaging and fancy wording that we don't even really understand what it is our body needs to work at its best. And intermittent fasting and intermittent feasting really does afford you the opportunity to do that because if you're clean fasting and if you're balancing out those hormones, your body will loud and clear let you know if you put something in it that it does not uh, appreciate and has the inability to break down. And that is really when we start to become very self-aware of how it is that food chemically affects our body. So. We're a big walking science uh, project, and I think when we start to think about our body being a big walking science project and how everything that we say, do, um, expose ourselves to, put on our body, put in our body, put around our body, really does cause some form of chemical reaction, generally being a hormonal chemical reaction, that when we are in control of those reactions, that we really do have the opportunity to look and feel our best and live our life most authentically and we have the power and the opportunity and the right to do that at any age we choose to start making these better decisions for ourselves. So let's stop focusing on the weight loss. Let's start focusing on the chemical reactions and the scientific um, opportunities that we have to create just by understanding our body and being able to control how uh, we have it respond and react to things that we are doing around it. So I'm gonna come in here today and I'm gonna uh, start with Facebook really quickly. I'll make sure that I uh, answer any questions and welcome anyone who's here. If you have any questions about intermittent fasting, now's the time to get them posted in our comment section. And I always like to ask if you've been in our course and you are one of my graduates, please make sure that you leave a comment so that we know you were here, share a little aha moment about maybe some of the scientific discoveries you've um, realized about your body or maybe even some of the things that you've realized about your feasting window and how chemically your body has responded Responded to some things that you've put in it that you were shocked with and if you haven't uh, joined our community yet or you're not one of our graduates why not um, and let me know if you plan on joining our November 2nd course as well and I'll make sure I give you a shout out why we're here today um, also let me see Jenny is here girlfriend how are you Janet uh, got on the live with us um, um, she's in our mindset course. Yeah. And you were doing great girlfriend. We're loving, uh, all of the work that you guys are doing in our mindset course for sure. She graduated our course in February, um, or it was March. She doesn't know. Amy's here. I'm on a plane heading to Nebraska. I will watch on the replay. Awesome girlfriend. So you're going to Nebraska and I'm going to San Diego. Um, we're going in opposite directions. Connie listening to atomic habits and in the graduate class yesterday, I fasted 23 hours and today I'm into my 24th hour still feeling strong. Good for you, um, Connie. Um, and then uh, we talk here a lot about some um, about extended fasting, and you guys have heard me reference my midlife mindset shift course. That's our second course um, that we are um, offering now as an opportunity to do some deeper healing and some longer fasting and doing some blood ketone and glucose testing. And um, once you get your body healed and you get all your hormones reset, then really being able to take advantage of some extra hours in your fasting window is really proving to. Um, do some next level healing uh, for a lot of us women as well. So uh, hopefully you'll get to the point where you're a graduate and then you can join us for our second course as well. Sheila, my cholesterol is much improved. That's fantastic to hear. I know for a lot of people who are fasting, myself included, um, oftentimes when you're in the process of healing your body, um, things can kind of go a little out whack, out of whack right before they go to the point of resetting. And I know for me, I had a little window where my cholesterol was a little high and with time and consistency, everything has balanced out so good to hear Sheila that your cholesterol is doing well for you Sarah is here Maria um, is bad to eat eggs every day for dinner so my philosophy on food is there's no such thing as bad food there's just food that might be bad for you so if your body handles eggs well and you enjoy having eggs for dinner then I would say definitely it's not a bad thing the only thing that I would recommend is that you make sure that you get enough variety of foods um, in your feasting window so that you make sure that you get a nice even balance of uh, nutrients for sure. So maybe just add in some vegetables and switch things up every now and then. And then rosemary, I was in the July course, fall fall off, need to get back in. Oh, you didn't fall off, girlfriend. You just made some decisions to do some other things. So now you're gonna do is make the decisions to come back in. And within a day or two of fasting, you'll be right back where you left off. Our bodies have this amazing muscle memory 
especially with things that it um, benefits from. So um, fasting and feasting is one of those things that all you have to do is make the decision to get back in. Your mind will remember all the benefits of what you did when you were intermittent fasting and it will jump right back in as soon as you make the decision to bring it back. So just come right back, girlfriend, we're here for you. And then Joan uh, from Colorado, December 2018 grad. Good to have you with us, girlfriend. Hope you, hopefully you're still reaping all the benefits of what you learned in class with us. Um, okay, let me see what I have here on YouTube and hopefully I won't mess it up and lose where the live chat is. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay, let's see. Uh, Linda B, October course student here, first time live. Good to have you with us. You October people, um, you are in the first week and you're just about over the hump of going from being sugar burners to fat burners. So pay attention to all the signs and signals your body is sending you and you're gonna have that light switch moment where everything clicks over and uh, you're gonna be able to start reaping the benefits of being fat adapted. And then Anne, August grad, Linda, um, Savannah, Georgia visiting, awesome. Brenda, January uh, 19 grad, watching from Florida, good to see you as well. Nancy from Cape Canaveral, um, October course and fasted 18 and a half hours today. Awesome, girlfriend. Can't wait for you to come on one of these broadcasts and let us know you're at that 20 hour mark. You're really close. And how about if you are a generally healthy person, no meds, not overweight, no chronic conditions, how about doing IF just cause? Yes, for sure. Um, intermittent fasting will keep you from being uh, a, a person who ends up having you know, chronic illnesses or aches and pains or having to be on medication at some point. Um, it is a, just a great way to live your life with mental clarity and the energized sense of calm and just overall sense of uh, energy and well-being. So you do not have to be sick to benefit from intermittent fasting. Uh, you will actually just have a head start if you're not having to deal with anything or having to reverse anything for sure. So I say jump in. Ruth's taking the October class and so far giving me some good new insights. Fantastic, good to hear. Shelly from Kansas City, September grad. I chose to eat my old way for dad's birthday celebration. Overindulged, felt like crap. Next two days, so right back on track with lesson learned, no shame. Yeah, we have to, we have to experience and test some things out. Um, so what I always say when you revert back to your old ways um, and you have the sensations of feeling bad, um, you know, that's a mindset thing also, right? So we have to test the waters. I've done it several times myself. And then you just have to realize like how many times are you going to allow that to happen and, and give up feeling great for the exception of having a bad day. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes not so much. But what you always have to know is that you can come back and within a fast, you can really get yourself back to feeling fantastic again. Um, Christy from September, um, it truly is more about healing the body and, and weight loss is the bonus. Had a planter's wart on the bottom of my foot for years. It is now gone, no surgery, no topical meds. Yes, so you know when you're in that, that deep healing state, we heal on the cellular level. and. There's so much you know, debate out there about how many hours you have to be fasted for healing to happen, how many hours you have to be fasted for autophagy to happen, how many hours you have to whatever. Just fast, just fast, and make really healthy decisions about what you're gonna do in your feasting window, make really healthy lifestyle decisions, make sure you're living a very happy and healthy emotional and mental life as well, and your body will be the one that decides what it heals first and when it decides to heal those things. So congratulations to you. I think it's absolutely f amazing. I just um, kicked my foot on my bed on my bed post on I think it was Sunday night, right? Sunday night um, or Saturday night, I think it was so loud that it um, was so hard that I fell to my knees. Everyone in the other room heard it. They they were didn't know what happened. It was such a loud sound. Uh, my foot was swollen Monday mor Sunday morning. Uh, I put my running shoes on, went for a light run. I could feel it. It was tender. It was tight. Uh, so I decided to walk on Monday. Yesterday, I ran three miles on my treadmill. No tightness in my running shoe. No pain in my foot whatsoever. No swelling at all. So healed within probably 24 hours from something that would have probably taken me a week to recover from and I would have had to give up working out and putting shoes on my foot. So yes, it's fascinating when our body um, 
it, we move out of the way and allow it the opportunity to heal. So I'm super excited that you had that experience. Now you know you just have to give your body time and it will heal itself. Dinah, um, hello. Is it normal to feel tired after feasting? Fasted 24 September 2019 grad. Yes and no. So there are just days uh, when you break your fast um, where your body's gonna, you know, you went from a fasted state, depleting insulin, to feasting and then having this sugar rush um, and so yes it's sometimes it's going to feel that way you're just going to feel a little bit fatigued what i always suggest doing is easing into breaking your fast and breaking it with something that has more fat in it than carbs or protein and then see how that feels so lightly break your fast and then ease into a feast oftentimes if you feast too plentifully or um or you feast on too much or it's the, it's too heavy in carb type foods or proteins then you can kind of get that fatigue feeling for sure so just to pay attention to what you did when you broke your fast and then just switch it up a little bit and see if you get a better experience um linda i did experience hair loss right here i like literally went bald um i think i still have like hair regrowth coming right here um it it happens i don't i mean it seems like it happens to everybody at different phases uh, what I did was I just added in a little bit more carbohydrates for a little while. For me, it happened when I went from not working out at all to really uh, clean 20-hour fast. And then I kept everything in my fasting and feasting the same, but added in workouts. And I think I just went too low um, on my carbs or glycogen reserves. Something happened. Uh, so I just added a little bit more conscious carbs, so like rice and sweet potatoes for a little while. Um, so that I could keep up with my working out. Um, it eventually balanced itself out. I don't lose hair anymore at all. I added in some biotin and some medicated shampoo and conditioner. If you want to know what the medicated shampoo and conditioner is, you can go to www.dyesfavoritethings.com. It's listed in there. Um, I just got it off Amazon. Within a week, my hair stopped falling out, and then I started to notice some regrowth. So it I want to say it's normal, unfortunately. Um, I think as soon as you head it off at the path, it will it will stop and slow down, and then you can start to get the regrowth again, for sure. Um, let's see, where was I at? Uh, is it normal to feel tired? I already did that. Uh, oh, Brenda, July, August 2019 grad. I love having you with us. Michelle, the energy I have. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Stacy, uh, July 2018 grad. Thank you for all you do. So very helpful and life changing. Yeah, you're welcome, girlfriend. Thanks for trusting me with you for sure. Um, I never take that lightly, and I love hearing all the amazing uh, stories that you guys have about the healing that you're doing. It's just amazing. Um, and will Michael do a class for men? We thought about it, and we actually tried to do one, and. Um, the response from men was just not the same as the response from women. So um, we're gonna enter, we're gonna like pull him in as much as we can. But what we're finding here if for us and for him and for me and, and everything that we wanna do and for my own personal mission of my goal to help for helping women is that it's best for us to just stay focused on where um, where we feel we're having the most impact and so that's going to be focusing on women and then bring your men in as you guys feel um, is necessary uh, men always or women think that their men are going to be excited about it and then when the opportunity presents itself oftentimes men don't jump and so I say just share with your men um, whenever you can and we definitely don't ever turn men away so they're always welcome to join in on the conversation um, Dinah chronic pain is gone for sure Michelle Michelle, I really need to join a class. I've been practicing for a good eight months or so and need more education. Michelle, come with us. We start November 2nd. We'll be done before Thanksgiving. And all of our November 2nd students will get our holiday feasting um, information about how we celebrate like the holidays around this time of year and some of the, the modifications that we have made where we, we stay within the guidelines and the boundaries that we have for ourselves feasting wise, but we still um, have all the traditional type of things around the holidays and um, no one really notices the difference with the changes and modifications that we made. So all of our November students will be getting that um, as part of their course. So I would love to have you and you'll walk away with some new ideas for what to do around the holidays. Um, Let's see, uh, Michelle, agree with Stacey, it is life-changing, yeah, for sure. Leslie, is an 18-hour fast good? Um, yeah, I mean, any any hour you put your body into a fasted state is good. 12 hours, um, I talk about this book a lot, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. Um, in that book, 
Um, it is noted that you know t just 12 hours of fasting can significantly reduce um, the risk of breast, breast cancer for women. So we talked about insulin being at its lowest at 12 hours. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, those are those hours where you're just benefiting from no new insulin and, and having the opportunity to just churn away at stored glycogen and start getting into that fat burning. So 18 is great. Will 20 be better? It depends on where you're starting from. So if you have some sugar related type of things that you're struggling with, um, hypoglycemia, insulin resistance, those kind of things, unwanted um, hormonal belly fat, unwanted fat on your body, that 18 to 20 hour difference is magic. Um, so if you wanna get better results, I say see if you can pump in those extra two hours. And then Karen, in the October class, I'm learning a lot so far, awesome. Carol, 2019 grad, 40 pounds down, loving the IF way of living. So there you go, June, July, August, September, beginning of October, and she's lost 40 pounds. So congratulations to you, girlfriend. You are definitely burning away some of that fat. Michelle, September grad, inflammation for my whole body is gone and never want it back for sure. You know, and that's that thing about weight loss too, you know? It's like, for some reason, the scale never seems to catch up to what our body is doing. And so don't let the scale be that thing that's going to determine whether intermittent fasting is working for you or not. You're going to lose inflammation. Your brain is going to be clearer. Your memory will come back. You will have more energy. Your um, skin will look healthier and start glowing. Um, the joint pain will go away. Um, the inflammation, the uh, autoimmune signs and signals will start to diminish insulin resistance will start to reverse itself. All of those things are going to happen and you can't measure those on a scale. But man, those are the ones that really do matter. And if you stick with it and you train your mind that this is the best way for your body to live and you live in it in a state of gratitude and and um, and happiness, the weight will eventually come off for sure. So um, I'm super happy for you, Carol. That is awesome. And Michelle, way to go, girlfriend. Um, I love the philosophy of intermittent fasting. Yeah, it is, it's fascinating. Janet, currently in mindset course. Thanks, Diane, for the support of our group and the fl flexibility you're offering us. A lot of mental clarity going into this course, which is perfect. Fantastic, and that's exactly what we want. You can't have a mindset shift if your mind is all clogged up. So we gotta make sure we keep it clear so that we can shift our mind into uh, uh, operating and thinking the way that we want it to. And then Audrey signed up for the November course. Look forward to learning from you and connecting with others. Yeah, it's great. The community aspect of our course every single month just blows me away that we can get hundreds of women from all over the world to come together in one tight space and absolutely love on each other and support each other and encourage each other and cheer for each other to me is absolutely mind blowing. And every single month, um, it is just that renewed sense of purpose and passion that I have to continue doing what we're doing so that we can help more and more women. So the community is going to be great for you. I can't wait for you to get in with us. Um, Margaret, you are so welcome. Lori had a 22 hour fast today, then feasted on a pumpkin cream cold brew and felt horrible afterwards. Totally get what you're saying. So not worth it. Yeah. And did you modify the cold brew? You have to modify the pumpkin cold brew. You cannot order it off the menu. As a matter of fact, you can't order very many things off the menu without making modifications to them. So if you don't know what I'm talking about with the, about the modification, go to my Instagram and go to my IGTV. I have um, on there a video about how I modify the cold cream cream, uh, the, the pumpkin cream cold brew. Uh, Teresa, I'm experiencing pain in my legs and lower back. I went to the doctor and, and had blood work done to check on where everything is since losing 30 pounds on IF and keto. I have low, uh, cre creatine levels help, uh, get a supplement. Uh, just go get a supplement and see if that helps for sure. And then I would Google what foods create, what it is you're deficient in, and then add more of those foods into your lifestyle for sure. If you are strict keto, it could be just the fact that you don't have a variety, enough variety of foods in your body that have that one thing that you're deficient in. So Google what you need to do to add that back in naturally and then get yourself a supplement. Sonia, how about joint pain when you fast 18 to 20 hours? Well, sometimes you get joint pain just because your body is releasing things and it's healing. So I always say time and consistency is the best thing that's gonna smooth those kind of things out. Melanie, um, I take CBD oil. Does that affect my fast? Um, it depends, you know, those are those things that I just, I get, 
I go, yes, no, I don't know. Like test it out. If you're getting the results that you want and, and you put CBD oil in your fast and you're, you're happy with everything that you're doing, I say, then it's fine. It's working for you. If you're doing something like CBD oil during your fast and you're not happy with the results that you're getting with intermittent fasting and you're just like scratching your head trying to figure out what's going on and why it's not working for you, then I say ditch the CBD oil for three weeks and then see what the results are like. So everything that you're doing is an experimentation and no two people are alike. So no two people are gonna be able to get the same benefits or the same results from doing things the same exact way. My husband and I eat just about the same amount of food, the same type of food, and we always have different results in what we're doing because we're different chemical creatures. So try it, if it's not working, take it out, see how that works. Um, Iwa, my biggest problem is water. If I drink as much as you say, I would have to pee every five minutes. I travel a lot and that's pretty annoying. Um, okay, so don't drink the water and then, I mean, like, you drink more water, you pee more. That's just, like, physiology, you know? I mean, you can't, there's nothing you can do about that. So if, if, the, if it's more annoying to stop to have to pee than the benefits of drinking more water... Slow it down when you, when you travel. Yeah. When I travel, I, I slow it down until I get off that plane. So, yeah, so if you travel on a plane and you don't want to get up to use the bathroom in the airplane, then yeah, just, you know, you don't have to drink 100 ounces of water in a commute. You just stagger your water throughout the day. So you start out drinking a glass of water, then an hour later you drink a glass of water, and then you drink more water. So plan it around your travel. And so that's what we were doing a lot of this in the Mindset Shift course. You have a lifestyle that you're trying to create. You want to put triggers in place so you can create some systems so that you can execute some habits. So if drinking water and traveling is not working for you, then drink your water in other windows of time. Um, and if that means that to get the right amount of water in you means that you have to stand at a sink and chug water when you're not traveling, then that's the habit that you have to create to have the lifestyle that you want to have. But yes, drinking more water makes you pee more. I don't know why peeing has become such a thing that is such an annoyance for us. It's your body's way of eliminating what it needs to eliminate and we need to eliminate. So uh, figure out your schedule, calendar in when to drink water and calendar in when you have to take a break and you should be okay. Um, Sonia, what is your next class starting for advanced 2017 grad? It will be starting in January, 2020. Um, Georgia, um, hello, Michael and Diane from Australia. Found you guys in March last year, loving this way of life. I'm going to sign up for the November course, Georgia. Yes, girlfriend, I can't wait to have you in November. You're going to absolutely love it. Teresa, all of my other blood work came back great, by the way. I don't know. I don't want to stop this good thing. Okay, so just because you're deficient in one thing doesn't mean that you should have to stop anything, especially if your blood work came back. So I guarantee you, if you stopped intermittent fasting, you would not concentrate on the foods or the thing that you're deficient in. You would just go back to doing what you did before you started intermittent fasting. So do your research. Google what you're deficient in, figure out the food sources that have that thing you're deficient in, increase those foods in your diet, and if there's a supplement for it, supplement until you become efficient. So um, that's the best way to clear a deficiency for sure, and congratulations to you and kudos to you for getting your blood work done. I'm super proud of you. We always, always encourage that here in this community. Um, and then Cree, I love one meal a day protocol. I have so much energy, but I actually weigh 39 kilograms. Do you think... You think underweight people should follow any kind of intermittent fasting? Um, 80, 86 pounds. Oh, you, did you do the math? <laughs> I, you know, that's a personal thing. I mean, I don't, I never know what overweight is and I never know what underweight is for an individual person. That's all based on you. Um, if, if I were to step on a, if I were to look myself up on a weight chart, I'm like almost obese. So what, I don't know about weight charts. I don't believe in them. If you feel good and you're healthy and you're living your most authentic life and you're doing intermittent fasting in a healthy way mentally and emotionally, then I don't know why there would any be any reason not to do it. If you feel like you're using it as a means to, um, to uh, forbid yourself from eating, then that's something that maybe you need to go have um, a conversation with someone about. If you're doing intermittent fasting as a means of punishment, then I would say that's something you want to take a little more seriously and figure out what the underlying issue is there. But if whatever it is you weigh is whatever it is you're supposed to weigh, then I don't think that, that there's anything wrong with intermittent fasting. So that's a very personal choice. And if you have any concerns or anything that seems alarming to you, I would always recommend going to speak to a professional, uh, either a therapist or a doctor for sure. And then Melanie, uh, going back to the CBD oil, I think maybe I'll take it out during my 
take it out during my feast period versus taking it in the morning during my fast. You'll take it during your feast. Yeah, I say, why not? Like, it's not gonna hurt you to take it later in the day. Um, and it could just be that thing that's hovering you in that spot of not getting your best results. So do it for a couple weeks and then please come back and report to us how you felt doing it both both ways. I can't wait. Um, and then Joy says, um, uh, I don't have an issue with CBD oil. So there you go. So everyone's different. Give it a try. See, see, what, you, uh, see what you feel and then go from there. Uh, Teresa is here. Increased energy is my favorite benefit for sure. Uh, Mina. I'm not on I'm not on October course when fasting I can be very hungry late afternoon but when I reach 20 hours I'm not hungry anymore why is that um, if I would say join our course and I, I explain all of that to you about how to balance out your hunger hormones for sure it's too hard to break that down here if you were my course I would refer you to a lesson Donna 2019 September grad thanks for the continued support girlfriend I'm here for you for sure Dixie when is the next mindset course I of January 2020 and then um, Irene, I'm starting IF next week. Congratulations, girlfriend. Come back around and keep us posted on how you're doing. I can't wait to hear from you. Leslie, what is CBD oil? CBD oil. CBD oil is... Uh, uh, from the... Uh, it's a cannabis... I don't know what the BD is, but it's um, it's a cannabis oil, and it helps a lot of people with like, anxiety and joint pain and all the things that intermittent fasting does for you. CBD oil does as well. So I always say, if you are not feeling well with something like anxiety, stress, uh, maybe your cortisol levels are high, maybe um, you're having trouble sleeping, intermittent fasting is the least expensive, absolutely do nothing, embrace everything approach to things. Once you heal your body through the process of intermittent fasting, then I always say add some things in to get the extra benefits of what those things offer. So I would say always go with intermittent fasting first because that is the natural way for your body to heal itself without having to put anything else into it. Then once you feel healed, if you want to take advantage of the extra benefits of adding things in and you have the financial means and the time means and the whatever means you need to make those things happen, then I say layer the benefits with outside things. Um, but a lot of people are finding here in this community that they're actually taking away things um, and not having to put them back in once they realize how efficient their body is uh, when it's naturally uh, producing the hormones that they need at the required time and in the required amounts. Um, and, and that's the best way to live your life for sure. But CBD oil is not a bad thing. I always say do the fasting first and then see if you need to spend the money on it because it is if you get a good CBD oil, it is definitely not um, inexpensive. Um, okay, so with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Remember, I will not be here on Friday, nor will Michael. We are. I'm heading to San Diego tomorrow for a business conference in San Diego. Don't be jealous. And Michael and Gabby are gonna be joining me um, out there on Friday, so we're gonna take a little long weekend and enjoy some, I get to see my San Diego family. I'm originally from San Diego, so I'll be meeting them uh, for dinner, and we're gonna go have a really good time in San Diego. If you follow me on Instagram, I will be Insta-storing my trip, as I always do, sharing with you how I don't bring it, I don't buy it, and I don't accept it when I travel, and how I use traveling experience as an opportunity to just mix in a nice long fast. And I'll share with you how I manage being at a conference and what I do about food and what I do about fasting and what I do about drinking my water. All of that will be included in my Instagram stories over this next weekend. If you don't follow me there yet, make sure you go find me. I am at four underscore today's with S underscore aging underscore woman. Michael put the links in the comment section for you guys, or I think if you just search my name, you'll be able to find me on Instagram as well. So if you hang out with me in stories, make sure that you send me a message, let me know you're there. And then that way we can hang out uh, this weekend in San Diego on Instagram stories as well. Our next class starts November 2nd. If you haven't jumped into a class with us yet, it is the best gift you can give yourself. You will make some great girlfriends, you will get some education, and you'll get some support as you're going through this intermittent fasting journey so that you can have the opportunity to look and feel your best and live your most authentic life. You guys, make great decisions for yourself and make sure the two best decisions you make is deciding how long you're gonna fast and how well you're gonna feast. Have a good afternoon, you guys. I'll see you in Instagram stories.